Hey guys, this is Jesse at uh, GlockMods.us. Uh, today what we're going to be doing is uh, tearing this Glock 22 third gen down. And what we're going to be doing with it is doing a light trigger job. Uh, nothing too extensive. And uh, also going to show you how to freshen up the action a little bit, make it a little bit smoother. We'll start out by doing a safety check. Make sure that the weapon is unloaded. I usually rack it a few times even though I know it's pretty safe. And one last time. Okay. All we're going to do is start by uh, breaking everything down here. I'm going to put it in the safe direction. Pull down your takedown pin. Pull your slide off. And uh, I'm going to I have a little video at the end of this one actually showing what I did before we started on this trigger job. And basically what I did was went through every moving part and some stationary parts that have movement against them, any type of friction, and uh, marked all of it with a magic marker. And what this is going to do is allow us to see exactly where the friction points are and where we really need to focus our time on, uh, on polishing and, and cleaning it up a bit. And this should help dramatically as far as knowing which surfaces to polish and which ones to leave alone because you can waste a whole lot of time doing a, doing a lot of surfaces that you really don't need to. But at any rate, uh, this may even show you a few places that you need to do that you may not have noticed before. At any rate, we'll start by, uh, by tearing down the frame on this one and move the slide out of the way. What we're going to look at on this is, remember I told you before I'd used a magic marker to, uh, to go over everything and show you where the friction points were. Now the center part here I didn't fill in because there are no friction points where that is lower than the outside edge of it. But you can see up along the, the edges here where it rides along the frame. There is some wear in that. Uh, there's some wear in here. Some wear right here. Again, all this was black with the magic marker so we can tell exactly where it was touched. Uh, the same thing up here where the, uh, the fire pin disconnects the striker. You can see all through here how it's worn. And of course on the inside there's really no wear inside there. Really touching anything. So to give you an idea on that, uh, let's see here. On the connector, if I can get this in focus here, all this was colored in so you can see where it's made contact all along those edges there. And let's see, on the frame itself, I marked um, all the different places that the slide rides along on the rails. And you can see exactly where they've got wear on them, which most of these you want to polish really good anyway. So that'll give you an idea of exactly where the wear is at. Okay, as far as right now, we're going to take apart the, uh, the slide, the barrel, and everything. Okay, now I'm going to show you um, what we're going to be doing with this. These are the pieces in particular that we're going to be working on today. Uh, this one right here really doesn't have anything to do with the, the, uh, the how the trigger is going to work, but we're just going to get it while we're in there. But this is your locking block, and right here where the barrel locks in, we're just going to barely polish it. This right here is the firing pin. And what we're going to do on it is in the very back here you can see where the firing pin rides along the sear and the trigger connector and right here is where you get your break from when you pull the trigger so what we're going to do is polish that up a little bit to make it smoother you can see there where the uh, the marker has been worn off of it of course the connector this one is a three and a half pound Glock connector you can see our points where we're going to polish on it Number here is another one. It's the extractor uh, plunger. And what we're going to do on it, you can see just a little bit of wear. Again, this isn't with the trigger. This is just going to be for the uh, the smoothness of the action and and the gun itself overall. So you see a couple of spots on it we're going to do. And then right here on the firing pin safety, uh, this thing can be put in pretty much in any direction. 
as far as uh, where you can spin it around there, or any orientation, I should say. What we're going to do on it is you can see where it rides along here on the trigger setup. And all we're going to do on it is polish this area down that way, no matter how that goes into the slide, it's always going to hit a smooth spot. And also, when you spin this around, you can see where that's been grabbing, so you can kind of see where we're going to have to do a little bit of polishing on it. And lastly, we get into our trigger here. And where we want to focus at on this is you really don't want to change any of the angles. So what we're going to do is go in and polish just at the very edge here where it goes onto the, uh, the safety plunger, the safety disconnect. We're going to polish a little bit here where the uh, the action bar rides along the inside of the frame. You can see points where it's been rubbing up against it just to make it a little smoother. You can see back here where there's some wear where that's been on the inside of the frame. So what we'll probably do is just polish that whole area there just to make it easier. And we're going to go over the disconnect and everything in here with the trigger where it actually meets the back of that firing pin, drops down and releases, particularly right here where you can see it's super shiny from where it and this piece here actually rub together. And again, guys, you really want to be careful because you don't want to change the angle of that too much. You just want to polish it up enough. Try to keep, when we're doing this, try to keep everything flat. That way you're not changing the angle because you want to keep those flat up against each other. And you can see a couple other little various places. So what I'm going to do now is uh, go over those pieces. And on the frame here, I'm going to go over and polish the, uh, the frame rails. But if you will, I'm going to go ahead and start on that. What I'll be using is going to be the Clean Bore Formula 3 Gunnel. And you want to have a lubricant when you're doing this. You don't want to use dry sandpaper against your parts. You want something for lubrication. And what I'll actually be using, because most of the Glock parts are pretty smooth from the factory as far as what you'll be dealing with. And you never want to remove a whole lot of material, especially when you get into to what releases your the hammer and the striker and everything. So what we're going to do is kind of keep it simple and go with a higher grit sandpaper. We're going to start out with a 1500 grit, and then we're going to move on to a Dremel with a buffing wheel and a buffing polish, mother's buffing polish to be exact. So what we'll do is we'll start out by uh, putting a little bit of oil on this and whichever part we're going to be doing. And we'll sand over it until we get a nice smooth finish. And once we get done doing that, we'll move all those pieces to the side. And then we'll move on with the Dremel tool. And we'll start polishing all these parts. So just follow along with me, guys. Probably put this in, uh, in double speed. That way you don't have to sit here all day, but you'll kind of get an idea of what's going on. So check it out and enjoy. Okay guys, this is one thing I was wanting to bring up here. I just now got around to sanding this part of it. And this is what I was wanting to explain as far as you don't want to change any of the angles, particularly in this area. It's going to be at the back of the trigger bar here where this meets the striker. It's a little hard to tell on camera here, but the very end where my fingertip is pointing here, that piece of metal has a little bit of an angle to it. And what it basically does is hooks the back of this, uh, the firing pin or the striker. And it lays against it like that. When you pull the trigger, this drops down and it causes the striker to fall forward. This is going to be one of the most important parts of the trigger job itself is when that disconnects there. Any imperfection you have, you can actually kind of fill it. What you want to do is just get that as smooth as possible. But again, what you don't want to do is where those two meet together right there. You don't want to change any of your angles there. Again, guys, what I usually use it's just a straight edge on here. I'm using one of the old AR cleaning tools. I like using it because it's it's hard, but it's a little it's not too abrasive door if you was to break through the uh, the sandpaper there. It's going to mar up any of your parts. It's the reason I don't use metal in behind it, and uh, it's a little stronger than wood, so you don't have to worry about it messing that up. I've used both, but this thing here, as you can see, I've used it on a lot of trigger jobs. It does the the job just fine. But what you want to do is it gives you a flat area and you put your sandpaper on top of it 
and you'll basically sand flat and make sure if you have to, to hold it up make sure that whatever you're using with the sandpaper and behind it is laying flat up against that piece and check it from all angles because you don't want to change the degree of angle on either one of these sides here because it can actually cause it to, uh, to slip off so you want everything to be just right what you do want to do though is when you're sanding this a lot of times you can sand anywhere between a minute and five minutes just according to how bad the area is that you're um, that you're polishing with 1500 grit it takes a little longer with 1500 grit but you don't remove as much material so what you want to do is get it to where it's a shiny you get rid of the imperfections and the low spots and then what we'll do when we have all these pieces done is go back over with the Dremel and a polishing wheel and we'll polish all these pieces out but I'm going to go back to this, just want to throw that note in there and uh, should be done with these in maybe a minute or two and the, the double speed and we'll go on to the polishing wheel. Okay guys, uh, right now we're moving on to the next step. Basically what we'll be using is uh, Mother's Mag and Polish. Aluminum Polish. It's kind of an older one that I've done a lot of guns with. I've got another style that I use. It's actually uh, an automotive buffer made for wheels and stuff like that too. So at any rate, this right here is the Dremel I'll be using. Uh, it goes from 5,000 to 35,000 RPM. Uh, this one will probably be hovering 30 to 35,000, almost as fast as it'll go. You don't want to burn up your polish uh, on the part itself. You want to keep plenty of fresh polish on it, and uh, and you can pretty much tell that. It'll keep a dull look to it. And once the polish starts to dry up, it'll look really shiny like a mirror. So you actually want to keep it kind of dull looking while you're doing this process. Uh, kind of do it on it for a while. And you want to mirror polish everything. But basically on these, we've got all of our parts gone over with the uh, the 1500 grit sandpaper, all the edges. And again, I used uh, the tool, the AR cleaning brush, to make sure we had our flat surfaces, our mating surfaces, between the back of the trigger bar and the, uh, the striker there. So what we're going to do now is basically uh, to coat the end of the Dremel there, the tool, with the mag polish. And I usually go ahead and put a little bit on the part itself too, just to be on the safe side. And what we're going to do is go back over and we're going to polish all these parts. And we're also going to polish the frame itself on the, uh, the slides there. So just bear with me. Uh, again, we're going to switch back to double speed and get this knocked out. On this, when you get into the trigger and the trigger bar, as you can see, I don't know how good the camera will focus here, but uh, we got all of it to a mirror polish. And that's running the Dremel about uh, 35,000 RPMs. You can see up here on the safety disconnect, all that's completely polished. On the firing pin itself, one thing I did do is up here mine is a little bit messy it's been through a lot so I just went ahead and buffed this up here you don't have to that's kinda more of a uh, thing that I was just doing toward the whole action itself there's actually a little burr here that I've got to get rid of and then we'll go back over and buff it what I'm gonna do is take all these parts and go get all the excess off of them the uh, all the polish and everything wash them down really good uh, set everything back up and then we're gonna put it back together throw a little bit of oil at it and, uh, and see how good we done. Okay guys, 
Uh, we finished up uh, polishing. I've actually went and detail cleaned everything, scrubbed it down with a brush to get all the, uh, the residue of the polish and everything off of it. But as you can see, I don't know how well the camera will autofocus, but uh, everything is uh, mirror polished. All the mating surfaces. If you remember, I had every bit of this marked down with magic marker to show you exactly where your, your wear points were. So that right there got to knock out quite a bit of stuff without having to polish completely the inside and every square inch of the surface. I didn't really waste a whole lot of time polishing down the places that didn't need it. So you'll be able to actually see connectors polished, the trigger group was polished, firing pin, the back of the striker here, mirror polished. What we're going to go ahead and do now is go ahead and reassemble everything. Uh, see how it feels here. As I go along, instead of just completely covering everything and all, usually what I do, we'll put a dab here and there and all the surfaces of friction. And I'll also take my uh, fingertips and just barely put a light coat of oil on them and, and go along the parts as I put them back together just to make sure they do at least have a light coating oil. You don't want to put too much because it'll pick up every grain of dust and it'll completely gunk up the gun, especially with uh, gunpowder residue. So, at, uh, at any rate, let's go ahead and start throwing this thing back together. Okay, guys. Uh, we've got everything back together now. Uh, just to tell you, I've already racked it a few times. It's extremely smooth compared to how it was before. There's no grab whatsoever when you're letting go. So, uh, basically, just to go over it again, obviously I've not loaded it since we started doing this video, but uh, we'll go ahead with the trigger pull. Safe direction. Clean break. Extremely clean break. That's amazing how much a difference uh, just a simple trigger job like that can make on something. Let me rack it again. Barely pull. Extremely clean break. So that's what we were looking for. Now uh, let's take it apart real quick. Look everything over. But, uh, it's all looking really good. Pretty much what we were going for as far as uh, a good smooth trigger job getting all of our mating surfaces very smooth. Uh, but as far as the disconnect on it, it's extremely smooth. Uh, we didn't change the angle back here on the back of the striker or the, the back of the connecting bars here. So um, it breaks extremely smooth where that those parts have been polished. But uh, at any rate, what we're going to be looking at here is either you can consider it a free Glock mod if you already have the uh, the 1500 grit sandpaper laying around. Maybe you do some uh, automotive work or maybe even some other projects on some of these guns. Or um, also a, a Dremel with a buffing. Well, you don't have to have the Dremel, but you can see what a big difference it makes on here. So I definitely recommend some sort of uh, buffing wheel or buffing machine. So... On this one, even if you had to buy the Dremel, we'll consider it a cheap mod. So it'll be under $50 on GlockMods.us. So that'll give you an idea of um, a really good smooth trigger. If you've got that stuff laying around, it's, it's going to be a freebie for you. And it's definitely worth doing because it greatly improves the action of this thing. Um, as far as our rails and everything, just the action itself is so much smoother. Uh, you can tell a huge difference uh, just in these little pieces being polished. So... Hopefully it'll be a good little performer for us, but this right here is one of the GlockMods.us uh, shop guns. It's just a third gen Glock 22 40 cal, so you'll be seeing a whole lot of this one. Uh, probably be doing a whole lot of uh, frame uh, stippling with it and things like that. So keep an eye out for it. Um, you'll be seeing this one a lot. We've got two more we've purchased that'll be just for the website as far as modifying or trying different frame mods. We'll have plenty more videos coming out for you. Um, again, we'll be going over some of the $50 and up mods, and those are going to be probably some of our drop-in trigger groups. Uh, we have some sites that some companies are sending us we're going to try out for you, and uh, we'll get you a review on those. 
and just a few other little various things. Uh, Glocks are pretty cheap to work on, so in general you're not going to be running into a whole lot of $50 and up mods that you can do yourself. Let's put it back together. And uh, just going to say a big thank you for tuning in. And hope you enjoyed the trigger job. Like I said, there's uh, plenty more that we'll be doing on here. So definitely keep an eye out for new things, new projects. And also, guys, uh, if you want to, definitely send your pictures in. We can put them on the website. I love seeing um, new ideas and people doing their own things with their Glocks at home. So definitely send that in and let us know uh, what you're doing out there. And if you don't care, let us put it on our website if you give us permission. This is Jesse at GlockMods.us. Please check us out on uh, GlockMods.us or on Facebook. So, uh, guys, we appreciate you watching the video all the way through. And please keep an eye out for more videos. See ya. And basically what I do, and I've done this for years and it seemed to work out okay, is take a magic marker. And when you have your gun apart, it doesn't matter if it's a Glock or whatever type of weapon it is, uh, usually on these parts you can actually see where they're already worn. They'll be slightly polished. And what I do is I go over all these edges with a magic marker, uh, especially here on the trigger group for this Glock trying to get it in the, the light there where you can see it. But uh, you go over everything with the magic marker and basically what's going to happen is when you put this weapon back together and uh, you fire it in action at several times, it's going to show you every single little spot that needs polished. Uh, this is going to be two things. This is actually going to help you from having to polish too much because there's a lot of places that really don't need it that I see a lot of people polishing on these guns. And uh, second is there might be a few places that you didn't think to polish before that actually get a little bit of contact. Uh, one of those being on the edge of this right here, on the edge of this uh, bar between the, the trigger there. And if I can get this in here, you can see on the frame there's these notches that actually stick out in the frame. And the edge of that trigger bar right there will actually wear just the very edge of it. You don't have to polish the entire embossed part of the, the lower area in there because uh, it's not actually ever going to see that frame anyway. So what you might want to do is lightly go over the very edge of that uh, just to, to help polish it up and uh, smooth up the trigger job. But at any rate, uh, one other thing I actually do that I see a lot of people miss on the trigger jobs as on your pins that run through. This one I haven't put anything on as far as magic mark or anything yet and you can see how worn that is. And this actually tends to happen in a lot of guns and when, which this one isn't the trigger one itself, but just to give you an example, unlike Berettas are really bad for it, the, uh, the pin that goes through the trigger, what you want to do is polish it anywhere that you see these worn areas and that'll help that when that pivot, when you pull that trigger, it'll help smooth up the trigger job itself and it won't let it get caught on any imperfections in the pin. But uh, at any rate, always kind of pay attention to that. But I did all the, uh, the small parts that are on the inside and also on the frame itself, I always tend to do the rails on these. And it's not so much because you, you know that you've got to polish the rail itself anyway if you're going to do that. Uh, but kind of the point is that to see if there's any adverse wear on any certain spots to make sure that the gun itself is functioning properly. So kind of another little tip for that. But uh, continue watching the video. I just want to throw that in there and show you what I did before I made the, uh, the Glock trigger job video. What I'm going to do is put all this back together. We're going to take it out, shoot it, uh, action as many times as we can. When we pull all this back apart as we start to do our trigger job video and smoothing up the action, you will start to see where little points, where you need to, to focus your polishing on the most on these little pieces, like your connector and all that. But anyway, uh, stay tuned for the rest of the video.